National Weather Service issues heavy rain and flood warning. Two homes missed by fallen tower in Port Mosby. And small business owner speaks of changes in tax laws. This is National MTV News with Meriba Tulo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us. This is Thursday's news. This morning, the National Weather Service issued a heavy rain and flood warning. It said the continuous downpour being experienced throughout the country may very well result in flash flooding and landslides. The Weather Service is urging all affected communities to take necessary precautions. Patricia Keamo reports. With the continuous wet weather being experienced throughout the country, this morning, the National Weather Service issued a warning for more heavy rain and floods. Speaking to MTV News, the service's director, Samuel Mai, has said there would be continuous rain in the next few days. Rainfalls that are being uh, received over PNG now is actually uh, due to the system. With much of the wet weather being experienced as a result of ex-tropical cyclone Penny in Australia, Maiha says rains will continue for the next few days at least, following reports that two cyclone systems in Australia merged into one today. He added that as the cyclone moves east, there will be increased winds and orographic effects in the Nakanai Ranges in West New Britain province. Given this projection, there is a high risk of flooding in West New Britain. For the people of Milne Bay province, especially Misima Island, there is also a warning of continued gale force winds that could reach speeds of up to 60 knots or 111 kilometers per hour. There is a requirement for the gale force over Milne Bay province. And I think the rest of the, uh, that's for the next 24 to 48 hours. Given all this, the National Weather Service is advising the general public to take heed of these warnings and take precautions and be on the lookout for flooding and landslides. Patricia Chiamo, National MTV News. The heavy downfall in the nation's capital in recent days has seen floods on the roads and some houses destroyed by strong winds. Part of the road leading from Nine Mile to Gerhum was blocked off by a landslip that occurred at around midnight. Piles of rocks and soil covered one side of the road. This morning, MTV News met people from Eight Mile clearing the road to allow motorists to travel. According to eyewitness Michael Anthony, fortunately there were no accidents as there was not traffic through that part of the road when the landslip happened. <laughs> Me blast start clean up the stone here. Now you can look at more the stone here go stop up. Uh, stone them still them stop yet. Uh, me blow no clear one and time and by pennies. So uh, this last stone them sit down here. No god uh, stand long and way but stand up now. All them them stop them loose them stop. So time rain walk lo come down is sliding down every day. So now when big blow one them come inside the road here. Uh, Ogre time them stop outside lo drain that so. So now I'm. As them come up on night, twelve o'clock, look and them come outside of the road. So you are talking about the heap, one heap of mountain or road lawyer. Yeah. Now, car you know come, so no around the accident come up on night. Now, me black carry on, look, clean up for some community, so me black walk, this black walk, coming up now morning. A transmission tower collapsed last night in Port Mosby, narrowly missing two houses at the Enu Guinea compound at Corbosay. This happened after continuous strong winds and torrential rain. The transmission tower belonging to Telecom PNG fell, narrowly missing two houses at around 8 p.m. last night. Fortunately, no one was injured. Cassandra Wichech, who was at home at the time the tower collapsed, recalls how electricity supply went off minutes before the tower collapsed. I just heard a loud crash. Bang. I didn't know if, in fact, that it was the tower. And then the, the, the security guard that looks after the tower was calling out, calling out, and he ran up um, to see that if everybody was all right. And then that's when I knew, I just looked out and we just saw the tower lying in the yard. 
Cassandra's husband, William, and their son were at a squash training when they heard about the incident. The main thing, there's no injuries, no fatalities. And it's all uh, just property damage, which can all be sorted out. Uh, so, yeah, no, that's all I've got to say. It's just so lucky. Following continuous heavy rains and strong winds, electricity supply to this area has been off since last night. Well, we've been without power since 8 o'clock last night, and so it's been over 12 hours. PNG power offices inspected the area at around 11 a.m. today. However, power was yet to be restored this afternoon. It has only been four months since the transmission tower was set up in September of 2018. The tower was an important asset for Telecom PNG as it transmits communication signals in the Korobosea and Two Mile areas. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. As a result of continuous heavy rains and strong winds, a house was destroyed last night at Taikone, Vabukori village just outside Port Mosby. Although fierce winds from the coast blew the roof of the house, fortunately there were no casualties as the occupants were not at home when the incident occurred. Elizabeth Guka reports. The house settled on a hill alongside the coast of Taikone in Vabukori village had its roof blown off into two separate halves after strong winds. Homeowner Killer Frank had gone to spend the night with his parents at their family home only a few meters away from where his house stood whilst his wife and two children were also with their families at Baruni when their house was destroyed. His mother, Wari Frank, told MTV News what had happened. The wind blew at about uh, 8 and 9 o'clock last night and uh, we were all in the, in the main house, the big house. And uh, my son decided to check the door, if the door was locked. So when he ran to the house, he found that the house was knocked down. The roof was blown off onto the road and later dragged to the roadside by neighbors. No casualties were reported. My daughter-in-law and the two daughters were at Baruni at the time of the incident. My son is safe and sound. Mrs. Frank described how her son reacted when he found that his house had been destroyed. He was heartbroken. He was very heartbroken. He couldn't speak. The family is now appealing to their families, friends and members of the public to assist them in slowly rebuilding their lives after losing their house and some of their possessions. As a mother, my heart goes out to my son because actually he spent a lot of money to build this house and uh, we are actually thinking of uh, rebuilding it and uh, we ask for, um, we are appealing to those of our family members or maybe the public to come forward to help us. Elizabeth Guka, National MTV News. And more damage were caused by the heavy downpour in Port Mosby. The fence along the Mari Barracks premises opposite SVS at Two Mile fell, causing damage to the fence. The fallen tree also blocked out the left lane of the road. With more rain and wind expected in Port Mosby in the coming days, the public has been urged to take precaution when moving around the city. Port Mosby residents should prepare for the power outage to continue in some areas due to the bad weather. The bad weather has seen several main power feeders, feeders affected. PNG Power gave daily updates throughout today on areas they were working on to restore electricity. By 2 p.m., PNG Power advised that all PNG Power technical teams had been dispatched to rectify and restore Port Mosby power feeders to restore supply. Areas at 8 Mile, 9 Mile and Bomana should expect power outage to continue in the days to come as a HV power pole at 8 Mile that had collapsed due to strong wind may take days to restore. Meanwhile, the bad weather and power outage affected traffic lights and residents should take precaution when driving on Moresby's roads. And with the heavy downpour in the nation's capital, PNG swimming legend Ryan Pinney and St. John Ambulance have warned the general public not to swim in flooded drains. There have been incidents in the past which resulted in children drowning while swimming in the drains during heavy rain. This is a safety message from St. John's uh, and I'm Ryan Penny. This is uh, some wild weather we're having at the moment and any time it rains uh, we urge you to stay out of the water. It may look fun and adventurous but uh, it can be very dangerous. Uh, any still water or any moving water uh, you should stay out of. 
But it can be dangerous undercurrents that can sweep you away into drains. Uh, it's very dangerous for young children to be in there swimming alone. Uh, always keep an eye on anyone and uh, just stay away from any of these drains. So there is like here, people are talking about it. Stop good, stop safe. Look and swim the flood water. By a bruise, you'll sick. Now, be aware, back up, my player. Plant the time, we'll pick in the die inside the slow flood water. Now, we'll answer, come, we'll be more. So there is like here, stop good, stop safe. Stop one bell with the family, be your house. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more of the day stories when we return. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. The tax increases implemented three days ago will be a burden for small businesses. Helen Kaupa, a trade store owner in Leh, says they've already been struggling with price hikes and the tax increases will only make things harder this year. Yeah. Helen Kaupa and her husband Daniel have been operating this trade store in West Taraka for more than 10 years. Mrs. Kalpa said it's been a struggle operating this business because prices have been steadily increasing over the years. We come now. We got little trash store now. We buy more something. We come. Tax block this la all cargo. We kiss him and we go on top through. Now we. With the tax increases imposed this year, a frustrated Mrs. Kalpa said it is too much. We put him now. We put him list him all price now. We put him all man looking more than this la price look like and we go on top too much. In November last year, the PNG government passed the new budget. For Helen Kaupa, she expects to sell chickens, tinned fish and biscuits at a much higher price with the new tax increases on flour, chicken and tinned fish. Helen Kaupa also has a poultry project. These projects bring income for her family. Tax block government, the Lokakaruk side, Stockpit side, Mr. Baim, we got tax block, we go on top to. I said, nah, this lady, I'm a Baim, I'm a school pin, I'm a walk him, I'm hard through low me. Lucy Kopana, National NTV News, Lay. Residents at Port Mosby's 8 Mile have moved the location of their informal market. The shift to a new location was done this week following clashes between two ethnic groups. Whilst the people have moved the market to a temporary location, they are also calling on their local member to assist build a permanent market for this part of Port Mosby. During New Year celebrations, an argument between people from Eastern Highlands and Southern Highlands resulted in violent clashes. This saw the destruction of the 8-mile bus stop as well as the location used as a market by residents in the area. So this lah, mi plan atau upno mi plan nak lah perunci saya mi plan stop ya mi plan lukis saya mno atau upno bampla kau tam tamlo mi plan porret lo. This lah incident kamera so mi plan kaman tau close tu lo megriga back back ya lo megriga lo freeway ya nami plan kam setim this lah lili hab market tu mi plan community lo mi plan market nami plan pakai kena sawa wistab. Following the classes, the market had been moved to a location along the nine mile to Gerehu Back Road. The residents have also called on their local member of parliament to assist in identifying and building a permanent market which can be utilized by the people within the area. According to Eight Mile Youth Representative Jerry Appa, their local MP had promised to build a proper marketplace. However, to date, this has not materialized. So mi plan cleaning this lab in oblo now to solve the time being, but mi plan like osem as istap oketana. Customer oblo mi plan osem all bakam lo national house come say na all bakam lo megriga na osem plan area area claim lo plan tu bakam na one so mi plan mas set up him osem and permanent market where government lo plan lo notice but look sabe lo mi plan. Following the classes and subsequent actions taken to move the temporary market location, police personnel have increased their numbers to ensure the safety of eight mile residents. So now yet um, every year we stop. No looks away from the community. We must maybe stop yet. So all police and all monitoring we go to light now. All all army to all come sleep low. Yet all tarry now all what no some la property no some la but all plant the property and they may just stay. Now every year we stop yet. Rayon Lakingu, National MTV News. 
Insufficient space, unhygienic conditions and a lack of proper water supply at the Larava market in Port Mosby has forced vendors to consider moving back to the old market location. The market had been moved in 2018, just prior to the APEC Economic Leaders Summit Week. However, vendors claim the problems faced on a daily basis and more so a drop in their daily income has forced them to consider moving back to their original location. Charlene Airy reports. Plans by Lariva Market vendors to move back to their old location was interrupted by this morning's downpour. Since moving to their current location, vendors say there has been a decline in customer numbers. They say the original market location was more conducive as it was closer to the shops and the main Hohola bus stop. Another reason they want to return to the market's original location is because of health and hygiene concerns at the Lariva Market. This market maybe I stop loving or right leak me block I'm Lea plenty problem come up Lea no water no toilet the vendors were moved to the new La River market by the National Capital District Commission prior to APEC they were told they would be moved back after APEC but countless attempts to move back have been prevented by police it finished three times yes I'm blog out of Ghana blog out of being called next day I'm APEC finish and next day I'm blog out of being called last night I'm going to go back to go back all police can begin all talk. Now I'm blocked to go and I'm all in law. And this is office now. All talk right now. All talk. I block my market against all talk. Block it. A manager of the security firm in charge of the market has filed a complaint with NCDC and has also prevented vendors from returning to the original market location until a response is received from city authorities. The vendors, however, say their business has been affected since moving, therefore, and are adamant of returning to the old market location once the rains subside. Line long, NCDC only no talks about me yet. So I think by me blind na bungla yeah because no good you blind give me problem no walk side blind me too. Shalin Eri, National MTV News. An agricultural expert says proper knowledge of food security must be passed on to local communities. With the wet weather becoming common and drought experienced regularly in the country, West New Britain DAL officer Alan Bong says people must understand the need to cultivate and store food sources. For West New Britain, taro, sweet potato and rice are the crops targeted. Change in weather pattern always raises concerns of feeding for urban and the rural population. The wet and dry weather has had huge impact in communities across the nation. Agriculturist Alan Lebong says sound knowledge must be passed so communities are informed of preparing when bad weather strikes. Food security, food can only be secured if you grow them. If you grow them. If you think you will buy them, and when the supplier doesn't want to sell to you because it needs the food, you can die with your money. So food security is not with money. Food security is you growing it. For West New Britain, wet and dry weather is common all year around. Lebong has been a Didiman officer for almost three quarters of his life. He says multiplication farms are being established to help rural communities grow and store food sources. Government agency Nari is also supporting the local Didiman. So we, we're trying seeking support from Nari to help us so that only can only can Balugulo Taro Blumi Blalo Western Britain now we can market him Taro so that only say was hey, you may plan him Taro. You may buy Kissing Money Lo Taro now, you may buy Taro now, you may buy Gato. Lebong believes money cannot buy everything. He says if people are vested with better knowledge and know the importance of growing nutritious food for survival, the wet and dry weather experience should not cause food shortage. The importance of the demand for Western Britain first is we must give money to every rural people and we must have proper food on the table and we must have an idea and knowledge and so we will look out the mall. Kai kai, now let's look at some. Jack Lopave, Jr. National MTV News. For many Port Mosby City residents, the Adventure Park at 14 Mile provides much needed space for relax and relaxation from the busy city life. This year promises to be a big year for the facility with some ambitious plans for development underway. Among improvements planned are the introduction of more animals. MTV cadet reporter Rosemary Iambune with the details. 
forward or build him new blood, big blood cage where me bla as a governor of the NCDC, me bla been talked to one time, me bla bring him some blood, giraffe or uh, or animals from overseas, especially all giraffe, now all tigers, now all uh, uh, all bears, now all elephant, now all this like come long uh, year long uh, adventure park. Along with building enclosures for animals from overseas, a convention center will also be constructed at this facility. This will happen after a proposed extension to the park's land boundary. The park hopes to utilize animals brought into the country for various programs, including for education programs. So if this facility, I mean, if this um, venue can be upgraded to an uh, international center, I would, I would be really interested in you know, it because kids like coming to play here, yeah, playing sports and um, uh, like waters and the, 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 the nature, wildlife sanctuaries. and. Uh. Policing the park entrance to prevent contraband and intoxicated people from entry into the facility is also a priority this year. The park is also looking to protect existing features as well as flora and fauna. For now, the start of 2019 has been fairly positive, with the park preparing to host a three-week fishing competition at the end of this month, with a lot of school children already showing keen interest. Rosemary Yambune, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. We go for another break. When we come back, we take a look at stories making headlines overseas. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas now, six people have been killed and another 16 injured in a train accident on a bridge in Denmark. The passenger train was hit by a falling cargo from a passing freight train during a heavy storm. Images of the aftermath of this morning's rush hour crash on Denmark's Great Belt Bridge. Police say the commuter train with around 100 people on board was hit by objects from a passing freight train and was forced to make an emergency stop. One of the passengers, Heidi Langberg, says she narrowly escaped. It felt as if we were pushed forward and then all of a sudden there was a loud bang and then the windows shattered over our heads and we fell to the ground and then the train stopped. We are shocked. We were very lucky due to where we were seated. The passengers sitting in the next wagon weren't that lucky. The Great Belt Bridge is one of the busiest commuter routes in the country, connecting the central islands and linking Denmark and Sweden to Germany. The morning train had been on its way from the southern city of Odense to the capital Copenhagen. Danish media reports suggest that metal poles, beer crates and tarpaulin from this damaged freight train were among the objects to strike the train's windows and sides. Six people died, 16 were injured and evacuation efforts were hampered by stormy weather conditions. It is a very, very tragic way to start 2019. Six have been killed. It's very hard to take. Right now we can only send our best thoughts. The rescue operation to free those trapped on board took more than five hours. Danish police are now investigating the exact cause of the accident. Twelve days and no resolution in sight. 800 American government workers remain in limbo as the federal shutdown continues. Neither the Democrats nor President Donald Trump are moving from the stance over the issue of the border wall. But the president is vowing to keep the government closed for, quote, as long as it takes. As congressional leaders headed to the White House today, President Trump told reporters to brace for the long haul. So how long do you think the government is going to stay partially shut down? Could be a long time or it could be quickly. Could be a long time. It's, it's too important a subject to walk away from. Day 12 of the shutdown and the impasse is only deepening. The president digging in on his demand for $5.6 billion to build his border wall. Look, when they say the wall's immoral, well then you better got to do something about the Vatican because the Vatican has the biggest wall of them all. Uh, the wall is immoral. Look at all of the countries that have walls. And they work 100 percent. The effects of this shutdown now literally piling up. Mountains of trash spotted on the National Mall. 800,000 government workers furloughed or working without pay. Even harder hit, at least 2,000 contract workers like janitors who may never get any of their back pay. 
Still, today the president publicly rejected a $2.5 billion compromise proposed to Democrats by his own vice president. We're asking for 5.6, and you know, somebody said 2.5. Uh, now, look, this is national security we're talking about. Democrats made clear they aren't budging either. We're asking the president to open up government. We are giving him a Republican path to do that. Why would he not do it? NASA has revealed some clear photos of the most distant planetary objects ever explored. The ice world has just been passed by the New Horizons spacecraft, which traveled more than 6 billion kilometers from Earth to see it. Power. Go ahead, power. Power is green. Copy, power green. Mission control running through checks that confirm this incredible venture has worked. Our uh, SSR pointers are right where we predicted, so... Flying right beside the most distant world ever explored. We have a healthy spacecraft. The relief of decades of planning paying off. And the scientists proud of giving us a view never possible before. Science to help us understand the origins of our solar system. What this spacecraft and this team accomplished is unprecedented. Here's where we were just, just a couple days ago. This was humanity's best image of Ultima Thule. Well, that image is so 2018. <laughs> Meet Ultima Thule. They've discovered a strange shape, which the scientists think looks like a snowman. It's a snowman. They've even produced this image to make the point about this rock left over from the birth of the solar system. And lift off of NASA's New Horizons space. Back when the mission was launched, hardly anything was known about the outer reaches of the solar system. It was an extraordinary gamble just trying to get there. There's a lot that's surprising about this tiny world, made up of two pieces of rock joined together. So this may be the first glimpse of how the planets were eventually built, one lump binding to another over millions of years. This shape it informs our models of planetary formation. You can see that they're clearly two separate objects that have come together. So it's, it's pretty exciting to see that. When New Horizons flew past Pluto, it revealed a world more active than anyone expected. Now this latest encounter has produced something even more profound, a snapshot of what it took to make planets like our own. To New Zealand now, the holiday road toll ended this morning with nine people losing their lives over 10 days. This year was New Zealand's deadliest road accidents in almost a decade. Near Dunedin, she was 24. In Auckland, it was a man in his 80s, and in Whanganui, he was only 17. My heart goes out to the friends and families of all of the nine people who lost their lives. It's tragic and unnecessary. Nine people died on our roads between Christmas Eve and today. It's the lowest holiday toll in five years, but it's also the shortest period since 2013. I'm pleased that it's fewer than last year, but it shows how much work we have to do to bring down the deaths and serious injuries on our roads. Despite the holiday toll being down, 2018 was a nine-year high at 380. New Zealand ranks 38th in the world for road traffic deaths, higher per capita than Australia, the UK and Norway, which has a similar population, although some countries are much worse, like Thailand, near the bottom of the list. Everyone thinks that the people that crash are just the guys that are being stupid or just the bad guys, but actually it's about 50-50. Half the people who are killed on our roads are just good, honest Kiwis who are making mistakes. $1.4 billion has been invested in improving New Zealand's road safety over the next three years. In urgent road safety upgrades to our highest volume state highways and our most dangerous local roads. AA absolutely welcomes that investment. Is it enough? I'm not sure that it is. Is it happening fast enough? I'm not sure that it is. We want to see the timing on some of those projects because the problem is here right now. But until then, experts say it's drivers who need to take responsibility for keeping the roads safe. But New Year is when we make resolutions and we look back on the year just gone. I think people could look back and say, was there a time I drove too fast? It's actually on us as well. We should be the best drivers that we can be. To help curb the number of lives being cut short. Auckland-based Bill Holwright spent his birthday playing golf, but he might just be the oldest. Bill turned 101 today. 
It's golf at a sedate pace, with good mate Jim on the clubs and teeing up the ball. Well done. Bill Hall right in his happy place at the start of a special day. Normally I have two rounds a week, and sometimes three. Not bad for 101, but... No. <laughs> the retired surgeon knows the nine-hole course so well, they've made him an honorary member. Three years ago, I did a, uh, this hole in one. We spent ten minutes looking for the ball, <laughs> and the ball was in the hole. <laughs> With only a couple of holes under his belt, news of Bill's 101st birthday round spread across the course. I just admire the man. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, you missed it. But Bill's missed little in his long and remarkable life, according to youngest son, Mike. The experiences we've had together has, have been amazing. Born in the remote Hawke's Bay town of Wairoa, the centenarian trained as a doctor, spending five years in the Army Medical Corps during World War II. A big day for some of our lads. Married to Pat for 60 years, the couple had three children. They were great together. It's been very sad since Mum died, but uh, he's a fighter. Bill came to golf late, too busy earlier in life due to the demands of being a surgeon at two Auckland hospitals. Any similarities between surgery and golf? Yeah. That's what I know. <laughs> but fellow golfers are sure there is a connection between Bill's career and love of golf. The precision stuff, probably, yes. What is the secret to such long life? I <laughs> so. Yes! But there's one thing Bill is sure about, his absolute favourite. Oh, Lee, she's magnificent. Wisdom indeed from a senior in a field of his own. Yeah. Here with Thursday's news, we go for a break. When we come back, some sporting updates in Trukai Sports. Don't go away. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. An agreement has been signed to allow for rugby league player insurance nationwide. The Memorandum of Understanding between PNG RFL and PNG Health Assurance Company Limited is the first time the National League body has partnered with an insurance company to provide cover for players in PNG RFL sanctioned tournaments. PNG Health Assurance is a general insurer focused on health care, personal accident and workers' compensation products. Today, it officially announced its partnership with the PNG RFL for the next five years as a major sponsor of the PNG LNG Kumuls. Having an insurance partner uh, is, is a big plus for the sport. Uh, there are the major platinum sponsors for the PNG Kumuls, but the opportunity for us to work with them, with an insurance partner, to uh, grow the sport and give confidence to our stakeholders. After signing of the formal agreement at the end of February, PHA will become the number one insurance partner of the PNG RFL. Getting an insurance partner to underwrite some of the risks that uh, our players and officials have to put up with uh, in playing the sport has been a major challenge for us. So we were to give in-house guarantees uh, that the welfare of the players and officials are being taken up. But having an international uh, insurance firm with credibility like this work with the sport, uh, we, the opportunities for us to actually look at insurance for our players from all, across all our six years. This partnership came about as a result of the Apex CEO Summit held last year, which PNG RFL CEO Reata Rao attended. So when I met with the Chairman uh, Raj at the Apex CEO Summit, they you know they, they were quite uh, they were quite impressive in the sense that they were able to pick up the um, interest straight away. Players in the SP Hunters, PNG Kumuls, and Intercity Cup competition have insurance companies that take care of the players during the season. But last year, concerns were raised by managers of PNG international players in terms of playing representative football after the end of the season. We're now getting inquiries from. Um, Player managers and rugby players association in the NRL to see if you know, like people like Nane and, and others who are playing in the NRL, if they play for PNG, are they covered? And so the need now arises for us to also, you know, if we don't have one like now that we've got PHA, we're thankful that we're able to you know, take care of this one. But even if we don't have it, 
all the international players that have watched the league season is over. And if they play for the country after the season, and if the annual contract is not covered, then we're going to cover it. And so we're thankful that this, they, they come in a big way to help all those uh, insurance needs. This partnership aims to provide some comfort for rugby league players in the country over the next five years. We see this partnership as a combination of the power of sport, sports with insurance that has the ability to transform the daily lives of PNG citizens. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. Still on Rugby League, 10 more players have been released from the SP Hunters pre-season train-on squad. Coach Michael Marum has given these 10 players programs to continue training and has given advice on areas that they need to improve on. 32 players still remain, with about 6 or 7 more players to be released before the start of the Queensland Intra Super Cup season. The SP Hunters will resume pre-season training on the 7th of this month at the Oil Search National Football Stadium. The final squad for the 2019 ISC competition is expected to be named by the end of this month. Don't go away, we have more of Trukai Sports after these messages. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports to some sports abroad now. And in cricket, Martin Guptil has passed Brendan McCallum to become New Zealand's fourth most prolific run scorer in one day international, with the Black Caps leading over Sri Lanka in New Zealand. It's been almost a year since Colin Munro and Martin Gupta last opened the batting, but they seem to pick up where they left off. Straight up, really high. Munro keen to answer any criticism over his recent form, but perhaps guilty of trying too hard. He'll back on it, he's gone as a result. The catch itself worthy of a second look, but no second chance for Munro, out for 13. Kane Williamson then got the best seat in the house as Martin Guptill, on his return from injury, provided a timely reminder of his one-day pedigree. That boundary making him just the fifth New Zealander to reach 6,000 runs in the format, but he wasn't done there. That's not really a natural stroke for Guptill, but the timing is exquisite. Williamson's decision to bat first seemingly vindicated as they breezed to a hundred partnership. Power from Guptill, huge six. Before the skipper himself passed 50 for the 45th time in his ODI career. The Black Caps captain eventually dragging one onto his own stumps for 76. Guptill made sure he didn't fall short of a ton, bringing up his 14th one day hundred shortly after. And a century that will please the skipper, the selectors, and many New Zealand fans. Then came the fireworks, and not just from the opener. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ross Taylor also peppering the boundary. A leading edge eventually forced Guptill to depart for 138. Not a bad return to the international arena for a man who felt he may be rusty. A quick-fire 50 by Ross Taylor and a 35 run over from Jimmy Neesham, which included five sixes, helped the Black Caps to 371 for seven, their highest ever one-day total against Sri Lanka. A daunting chase under lights. The tennis and ASP Classic favourites Caroline Wozniacki and Venus Williams look set to face off in a star-studded quarterfinals clash if they can win their respective matches tonight. The other six quarterfinalists have already been decided after centre court last night. At just 17, Amanda Anisimova's the youngest player in the top 100. The wild card stunning veteran Barbora Stritseva with booming forehands. Oh, Anisimova with it on a string of hammering down that backhand side. And delicate drop shots. 6-3, 6, -three, six -three, the teen showing composure beyond her years to charge into the quarters after a night of feisty encounters where Eugenie Bouchard had come out firing. Well, if that's not decisive, I don't know what is. But quickly unravelled against Bibi Schuffs. Oh, it's in! The Canadian lost her cool, then the first set. Schuffs continued to cause her problems in the second. Bouchard did level the match, not that her coach was convinced. The clear problem is your attitude. The only reason you won this set was because because the last few games you buckled down and you fought hard, your attitude is 
Bouchard managed to keep it together for the remainder of the two and a half hour contest and this 25 shot rally that brought up two match points. Oh, outstanding. The player echoing her coach's thoughts. At times during the match it was not good. Um, I got too emotional. Emotions also boiled over for Julia Gerges, who hit out at match officials after a ball coming towards her was mistakenly called out. Gerges not happy the point wasn't replayed. But what are you here for? After sealing victory and with the umpire still seated just metres away, the tension continued. What's going on? Well, you should ask the umpire. <laughs> she, <laughs> she knows it better than I do. She'll face Bouchard in the quarters in what's sure to be another absorbing encounter. The football and the Wellington Phoenix have got their January shopping underway, unveiling the first signing of 2019 who's won three caps for the Republic of Ireland, has spent the past two seasons playing in the Polish top league, scoring 20 goals and just over 60 appearances. And while Wellington may be further from home, he already sees the club as an easy fit. Here's a bit different. I'm coming to a, an English-speaking country, a beautiful country, so I don't think it's a, I'm out of a comfort zone here, I don't think. Mm, he will be soon. <laughs> Sheridan will take up one of the two remaining overseas slots in the squad. What you're seeing now is another step forward in our development, but there's still more to do within our system in terms of the way that we can play, um, and he gives us that. Sheridan's expected to travel with the squad for their next match against Adelaide. That's coming up on Saturday. And that's it for Trukai Sports this evening. We go for a break. When we come back, the weather details for the next 24 hours. Kai Sport. True Kai Sport. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. A look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region. Showers expected in Port Moresby, Daru and Kerma. Rain and thunderstorms for Alotau and Popandeta with a top of 32 degrees. To the Momasi region, showers expected all across the region. Lei, Medang, Wiwek and Vanimo and some showers and rain as well in Wau. To the New Guinea Islands region, thundery rain expected in Kaigang. Showers in Lorengau, Kokopo, Rabaul and Kimbe. Thundery showers in Buka. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi, and Wabeg, all these major centres can expect showers over the next 24 hours. To look at the forecast for small ships, but first uh, there is a gale wind warning, very strong northwesterly surge of 34 to 48 knots, with stronger gusts reaching 64 knots are expected to continue for the next 24 hours, causing very rough seas and high sea waves. All small craft and boats are advised to take the necessary precaution before and after going out to sea. And there is a strong northwesterly surge of 25 to 34 knots with stronger gusts reaching 48 knots expected to continue for the next 24 hours causing rough seas and high waves. To a look at the forecast for small ships for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island to Kerma, Yule Island, Hood Point to Samurai Island and with waters of Finchafen through Vitias and Dampier Strait to CSE Island to Long Island, seas 3 to 3.5 meters. Waters of eastern and western Milan Bay Islands, seas 3 to 4.5 meters. Waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel, Finchafen and with waters of Long Island to Medang, Bogia, Wiwak, Aitape, Vanimo and the northern PNG Indonesian border and waters of Manus in its western group of islands and waters of New Island to East New Britain and West New Britain to Bougainville seas 2.5 to 3 meters. Look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas, Coral Sea, 
seas very rough to high seas with northwest to southwesterly winds of 34 to 48 knots with stronger gusts reaching 64 knots. Solomon Sea sees rough to very rough with northwesterly winds at 30 to 48 knots. Bismarck Sea sees rough to very rough with northwesterly winds at 30 to 48 knots. And the Pacific Ocean sees rough to very rough with northwesterly winds at 30 to 48 knots. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. And that's the news, sport and weather for today, Thursday the 3rd of January 2019. On behalf of the MTV News team, pleasant viewing, good night.